This video is going to look at restrictions, uh, which is a security aspect of the iPad, which you can enable or disable and restrict access to, to applications, to settings, to services. So it's good for controlling what you want other users to be able to do on your iPad protect it. It is available from the settings menu. So in settings general, scroll down till you get to restrictions. It's always off, the default is off, so you need to enable the restrictions first of all. Enable with a four digit code. And then you have some sections there that you can go through and set up. So so let's just go through all the things that and what they mean. In this first section are all the different um, applications that you can turn access off for. So for example, if I uh, turned installing apps to off and deleting apps to off, what I'm effectively saying is that nobody who uses this iPad will be able to go to the App Store. In fact, the App Store app will just disappear and I won't even be able to see it. And I won't be able to delete any apps. So it's out of accidentally, you know, if somebody's mucking around with this and they, they, they hold down an app and it starts to wiggle, uh, they can delete apps and um, not even know they're doing it. Let's just test those two out. So I've turned those two off. So theoretically, uh, no app can be installed and no app can be deleted. And then go back out of settings. And normally my app store app is sitting on the dock and it's not there now, it's been taken away. Uh, there's no point looking for it anywhere else because it is not going to be there. It should be on the dock. If I wanted to delete something holding down, I can hold them down and they wiggle. And that means I can move them around, but I can't delete them. The little cross is gone. So there's no way I can accidentally delete an app. If I go back into settings and into restrictions, put my code back in and turn these back on and then go back out and hold it down. Now I can delete them again and I've got to find my app store. Is the app store and put it back in the dock where it was. So I mean, you can sort of see the, the power of it so far. Just to protect you from you know, people who don't really know what they're doing. So in each one of these, if you turn, turn them uh, off, what you're saying is that Safari will not be available. So no web browsing can occur. Uh, can't use the camera, can't use FaceTime. Uh, can't access the iTunes store or the book store, can't install apps, can't delete apps, can't use Siri and, and conversely can't Siri, use Siri with inappropriate language. So you're not really giving them much they can do. If I, if I go back out of here now, then um, I'm, a lot of stuff's gone on my dock and I'm, all I'm left with is, is just exactly what's, what's here. So let's go back into settings. And also, I uh, can't use Safari either. So unless I have another browser, this is, this is another browser, iCab Mobile, but there's no Safari. So effectively, there's no way I can go on the internet. So it's, it's quite safe if you've got young kids who you really don't want them to, do, to get up to too much mischief. So back into settings, into restrictions, and turn everything back on. And I, mean, I could just turn um, explicit language off. So what that's saying is I can use Siri, but I can't use Siri and, and, um, and, and, and swear at her or ask her to swear at me. So let's go back out to the dock. And three of my, my apps are missing. So the uh, App Store, the iTunes and Safari, when you enable restrictions and I've turned them off, they're taken out of the dock and they're just put in the in the first available position in one of your pages so there they are I have to just now go back and put them in so I can hold them down and drag them back in and I would ha have now have access back if I go back to the very first page I've got access back to the camera and to FaceTime so everything of of um, disabled is now back again because I've re-enabled it 
So back into settings, in restrictions. What else can you restrict? That's the middle section, allowed content. Ratings for you need to decide or put in the country that you're coming from. So I want the restrictions for Australia. And by restrictions, we can look at, say, in, in films, they're the restrictions for Australia. So if I want to disallow uh, 18 you know, R films, so 18 plus and MA films, I only want to allow uh, the user that I'm uh, letting the iPad play with the iPad access to G rated films or PG rated films. I can change it on here. Uh, so I don't want them to be able to watch anything here and, or M. Uh, turn off M as well. So for this iPad, the only films that will be allowed to be watched will be those that have G or PG. And I can do that for, for the TV programs as well and for the music. Um, for the mu Actually, for the music, you've got to be able to turn on and off explicit. Some of the podcasts, when you look at them in the iTunes store, have uh, next to them explicit, which means there's some inappropriate language there. Now, I can turn that off, which means that any podcast that is uh, sitting on my iPad downloaded or if someone goes to the iTunes store, they won't be able to download or listen to or see anything that has been rated explicit in the iTunes store. Uh, so for TV programs, I might do the same thing and only allow turning off all of these and only allowing up to PG. Uh, for books, explicit sexual content, so you know, if I put that on, then a user can go into to the um, to iTunes or go into the iBook store, but they won't be able to download or read or sample any books that have been categorised with explicit sexual content. So it could be accidental that you find these things, but in, in that case, they won't be able to look at them. Uh, so if you look back up here, the, the only podcasts that are, are going to be able to be, or music, songs, will be able to be able to listen to, sampled, purchased, have to have that category of clean. Uh, let's see, for apps, same thing, because all apps have a rating. So if it's uh, for grandchildren that you're enabling all these restrictions, then you can turn off any apps uh, so that they have to be at least know, rated for, the, for for 12 years or more. Anything that's been categorised, like it could be a game, for age 17 or over will not be able to be seen, sampled, played, downloaded, purchased. It just won't be, won't be visible. Uh, for in-app purchases, and this can be quite expensive if you're playing a game that's uh, essentially free, but uh, in order to be able to, to progress in the game, you have to go and buy something from within the app, and maybe it's more coins that gives you more lives or whatever it is, uh, you can turn that off, which is sort of the, the next one here. Do you require a password to purchase content from the App Store, the iTunes Store, the iBook Store? And you have a couple of choices. You can say every time uh, I access something from the from one of those stores, a password needs to be input, and that might be the safest way even for you to have that just that turned on. Because if you have 15 minutes, the first time you purchase something, it'll ask you for your password, and then it won't ask you for your password for another 15 minutes, which means there's a lot of stuff can be downloaded on, on the uh, credit card in that 15 minutes, even for your own sake, even just have that one turned on will make you think and stop before you actually keep going go downloading too much media. Uh, require password for purchases. That's sort of the middle section there. Let's just sort of go, to, go out and have a look now at what these restrictions have done. All right, so let's just see what we're able to do now with those restrictions turned on. So if I go into the iTunes store, and I don't want to be able to see any music that has an explicit rating or to see any TV shows with a particular rating or movies. So let's, in the music store, I'll just stick in a search term sex. It's bound to bring up some explicit stuff. 
and look for a song that has a rating of explicit. And doing a general search like this in the iTunes store is going to give you uh, books and songs and albums and TV seasons all with, with sex in it somewhere. So let's just look at music. And there is a, a song here, I just had sex with an E rating and is greyed out. So there is no way I can look at that song. I can't uh, hear a sample of it. I can't see anything about it. It is completely greyed out. There's nothing I can do with it. That's the song there, but I can, I'm tapping it now, but I cannot play a preview because it has an E explicit rating. And we've, we've specifically said, no, you can't have any of those. Anything it hasn't. So here's a, another song here, Sexy and I Know It, um, which hasn't got a rating of explicit. explicit. Uh, therefore, I can play it. And there's two others in that album that do. Rock the Beat and Sorry for Party Rocky. They're greyed out. I can't do anything with those. But this one I could tap on it and um, play a, um, a preview of it. So that one seems to work. For TV seasons and the uh, restriction that we put on there was that PG and less than PG, anything above that, so M MAs and Rs would not be able to be seen. So for Sex in the City, there's bound to be uh, yeah, out of the range. So Sex in the City, say so season six, and that has a rating of MA. So theoretically, none of those episodes should be able to be downloaded or previewed and I'm tapping away at it now and it's not opening up at all the preview on the left I'm tapping that and there's nothing uh, opening up so there's no way I can watch a preview or download and buy that show uh, I can look at the description but I can't actually watch it I can look at the ratings and the previews but no way I can download it uh, let's have a look at uh, some games so into the App Store and disabled in-app purchases so that any game that has an in-app purchase should not be able to be uh, seen um, so finding a game so one for coins because there must be one a game there that would require you to buy more uh, coins from within it and coin dozer for ipad is one that i have bought before and I know that requires an in-app purchase. So I can um, see the game because it has a rating of four plus and our games restriction was up to 12 plus. So I can see the game, I can install it again because I've, because I've bought it, but it has got an in-app purchase. So showing the in-app purchases, I could download that game. And then if I want to get progress really quickly in that game, I could go and buy 900 more coins for $10.49. But I've disabled in-app purchases, so I can tap on this and, and nothing will happen. They're all greyed out. So instead of, of, of charging my credit card $20.99 because I'm uh, right in the middle of this game and I want to get further ahead, uh, I've disallowed it. So even restricting things for yourself might be useful. So that works. Uh, disabled in-app purchases. Uh, looking for a game that's above the rating so something that's requiring you to shoot is is got to have some things that are over the age of 17 uh, and there are some of them so I mean you look at some of these games contract killer has a rating of 9 plus so if you're looking at violent games then you may have to reconsider your restrictions and go even lower because a, a, a child who's nine uh, or 10 will be able to actually play this. It looks like a pretty violent game. So that one's still feasibly able to be downloaded. Dead Trigger has a rating of 17 plus, and that's outside the range we set for uh, allowing games for the, um, for the restrictions. And it's free, but that free is grayed out, so there's no way you can download it. There are no pictures, so you can actually see screen grabs of it. You can read a bit, you know, some of the details and see all that, but there's nothing else you can do with it because we've effectively disabled it by putting those restrictions in. 
if you look back at these other games, like this one, Modern War, there's screen captures of it. When you disable something, we effectively disabled any games with a rating of 17 plus or more. Uh, that seems to work. Books, we've um, disabled explicit sexual content in books. So going into the, the uh, iBook store and into the store, and again, put the search term sex, because we're looking for explicit sexual content. and any book that has a rating of explicit sexual content, and there seems to be a lot here, has been greyed out. So there is no way I can I can tap on any of these if they're greyed out. Nothing is going to come up. Uh, I can't get a, a sample or buy it or do anything with it. So there's a um, one of the ones. That's the message you get. It contains explicit sexual content, and you have to go back and change your edit your restrictions if you want to be able to see it. Uh, something like uh, you know the Delilah's journey, a sexy journey, obviously mustn't have the rating of explicit sexual content, so maybe you don't want it anyway. So they seem to work. So then we go back into settings and restrictions, code back in, and you can change that, change them back. So I might put everything back on. Uh, and then the apps I might decide, well, 12 plus, there's still too much violence there and, and maybe only allow 9 plus, even though there's some of those games. Uh, you have to make some decisions depending on the age of the, the person who, who are allowing to use your iPad. So I can leave all those settings there because as soon as I, so um, let's leave uh, music as clean because if I go back out and disable restrictions, because now everything's off, all the restrictions effectively are off. So if I went back into the um, iTunes store and back into music and looked for that same song, um, it's now available to me. It's not grayed out anymore, so I can actually tap on it. And I can now play a sample of it. So whilst those are, uh, restrictions still stand they only work if you enable the restrictions so if you want to give your your ipad to a grandchild to to play with when they arrive enable the restrictions just go back into your settings restrictions and turn them on then everything that you set is still sitting there when they go home you turn off the restrictions so it's sort of a, a really handy way of, of controlling what, what uh, your users see. Uh, so I'll leave everything there. Privacy. Uh, many apps that you download will want to, to have access to some of the uh, apps on your iPad. So for example, photos. Um, a lot of the apps here need to use my camera roll. They need access to my photos in order to be able to work. So for example, um, let's look at one Prezi, which is a, a, a presentation um, display software. If I wanted to create a presentation with Prezi and I wanted to use some of the photos in my camera roll, I have to allow Prezi access. And so I can disable access for, for any or all of these, but I can't see the point in turning that off if you've actually deliberately download an application that needs to use photos and you need to give access to it. But some of them, you know, you've got to decide which ones will you allow access to uh, your particular section. So for contacts example, uh, Skype, if you wanted to, to Skype, it needs to use your contacts app to get some information about who you want to call. So privacy, um, Look at each one and just make a decision about what you want to do. Same with location services. Many apps want to use your location. So if you, um, well, I'm living in Australia and, I, and I've downloaded an app and it wants to uh, use my location, if I say no, then it's not going to give me localised information for Australia, but I might end up getting you know, American information. It sort of defeats the purpose. So generally I would allow it. 
uh, access uh, to my location. Most of these things just seems a bit you know, stupid to not because I want I want to be able to get information that's directed at my geographical region. So I don't think I disallow any of that. Uh, accounts allow changes. So in accounts, if you don't allow changes, which is probably the safest one for, again, when you have people using your iPad that uh, is not you, if you select don't allow changes, then no one can accidentally or accidentally on purpose uh, move or add or modify anything in your mail, contacts or calendars, which I think is pretty useful. Volume limit two, if, you're, um, if you say don't allow changes, then you can set a minimum volume limit and, and nobody can make it any higher. So again, if you're worried about the songs that people are listening to and the, and the volume of them, you can control that. For the game centre, uh, turning off multiplayer games means that anyone trying to play a game cannot join in to those multiplayer games. They can only play on their own and the same with any sort of game that allows you that social networking into interaction to add friends, you turn that off as well. And uh, disable restrictions, turn that off. Which means everything is greyed out there. I have made some changes to those, but uh, it's essentially not going to affect me because I've turned off restrictions. I've disabled them. So I can do whatever I like because it's my iPad and I decide what I want to do. But when I give it to somebody else, I'm turning them on, putting my code in twice, and now all those restrictions are in force in order to turn those on as well. Accounts. Don't allow changes. Volume limit. Don't allow changes.